Okay, thanks very much, Mark, and, and thanks everybody for, for hanging around. It's good to talk to you all today. So quick agenda here, and, and we'll get um, right into it, just confirming that I've got uh, control here. I'll give you an overview of uh, Tapestry Solutions, and then we'll get right into the enterprise sensor integration uh, technology that we have and how that relates to the Internet of Things platform that we've uh, established here. Okay, so Tapestry Corporate Stats, we have uh, been in business for about 20 years, about 800 employees, uh, several offices, headquarters in San Diego, and then major offices in San Luis Obispo, St. Louis, Charleston, Orlando, the UK. Partners all over the world, we're a, we're a wholly owned, non-fully integrated subsidiary of the Boeing Company. And, and what that means is we're a separate cost center from Boeing. Uh, we have one shareholder, and that's the, the Boeing Corporation. But Tapestry operates as, a, as an independent company with our own P&L. Solutions-wise, uh, I showed you the, the different offices that we have around the world. And that's a result of, of different acquisitions, uh, boutique software logistics companies that the Boeing company had acquired 2012 and prior. And, and it's combined us into where we really have A to Z functionality. The, the thing that I'll talk about the most today is our enterprise sensor integration. Now this slide here is uh, is quite an eyeful. It's, it, it gives you the sense of confusion. It gives you the sense of multiple inputs. How do you organize your supply chain? Where is everything? Are you optimized? Are there different means and modes of, of your supply chain? Are they talking to each other in a cohesive manner, in a secure manner? And the slide's meant to portray that, because that's, that's really what it is, with uh, especially with complex supply chains. Uh, from a specific enterprise sensor um, standpoint. This is a slide from one of our customers, and we took the systems and just called them generic systems one through eight. The, the, the problem here becomes with a lot of uh, mid to larger size enterprises is that they have disparate technologies from different hardware providers, and each of those hardware providers have a proprietary middleware. So then you get this situation where you've got all these stovepipe systems multiple interfaces and it becomes extremely difficult to, to manage. So what we ended up doing, and this, this started out with, with the Boeing company, the largest aerospace company in the world, um, they wanted complete visibility across their entire supply chain, but it was too difficult with all the different uh, proprietary hardware. But they wanted to also leave all their legacy systems in place. So essentially what we did is we built a platform that's the, the middleware of middlewares to collapse and, and neutralize that need for all those disparate proprietary stovepipe systems. And we build a services-oriented architecture open platform uh, based on an IoT uh, situation here. So what we did is um, we focused on key elements. It has to be sensor agnostic. Doesn't matter if it's our passive RFID, active RFID, UHF, wideband, Bluetooth, it, it doesn't matter. We, we made it the, the platform so we've got hardware integration services so that it can take feeds from, from multiple types of technologies. It's scalable both vertically and horizontally, so it's, it's a fit for smaller companies and, and it's a fit for huge companies like, like Boeing. It's also a connection platform if you're familiar with the term PLC or program, programmable logic controllers. Uh, we also implement artificial agents, and you really start to get into what many people consider IoT type technology here, is different business logic, or some people will call it artificial agents, intelligent agents, that will trigger different events and notifications based on certain criteria being met. So in other words, if X and Y happens, then X, then, then Z is going to be an event that, that comes out and gives you a notification and causes some sort of action. Here's a, a quick look at the, tar the architecture itself, and, and, and we'll focus on really four main components here. So first one at the top, hardware integration services, that's really the, the holy grail for an IoT platform across a large enterprise, and that means that we can look at all those different type of technologies, again, bring those in to one platform. So sensor agnostic, that's, that's the key 
of why this has become so successful. To the left-hand side, you'll see um, a third-party connection here where you can connect to different 3PLs. So external partners can have visibility to your supply chain as you wish. Now that's going to be certain parts of the supply chain, but you can give them, uh, get them involved in, in the IoT platform as well by using some of the, the um, intelligent agents that I talked to you about earlier on the previous slide, where if a container or a kit is assembled, you can send a notification out like we do for some of our customers for a 3PL to pick up that container and move it to the next spot. So it helps with the material processing. Uh, the bottom part there, applications. So we offer a software development kit, but our, our, our uh, platform here will come with some standard applications. However, when you have all the different types of sensors feeding all this information into one spot, we find that innovation becomes key at a lot of these different customers, a lot of these different companies, they want to do different things and create their own innovative applications. And they have the ability to do that. The, the fourth spot on the right there is ERP systems. So can this connect to SAP and, and Oracle and homegrown ERP systems? Absolutely. And that's why it's a, it's a true enterprise class platform. So some of the benefits that, that we've seen and our customers enjoy, improved productivity, you're able to manage and look at uh, work in progress throughout your, your assembling, your manufacturing, your distribution, your, your cold chain, supply chain, all those sorts of things. Reduced inventory cost, that's a huge one. Um, you know where everything is, so you're not sending around expensive engineers to, to go look for tools or parts or pieces for, to get their job done because it's, if it's got a tag on it, or a GPS device or some sort of sensor, you know where it's at. Um, enterprise visualization and, and data analysis, so much information and we're able to make it useful and we're able to do it through reports and visualization techniques and, and tables. You know, we, we found that uh, if, if the executives have to look at one more spreadsheet, you know, they'll just go crazy. So we're able to, to show these uh, reports and this data analysis in a, in a nice visual way that people would prefer to see it in. Improved safety, improved supply chain velocity. So we're able to put, um, we're able to manufacture products quicker now. And in the case of a, of a big aerospace company, if you're able to pump out your, your aircraft faster into the market, then you're recognizing revenue a lot quicker. So some of the, the big use cases, um, you can see these are some screenshots from the application itself, but again, locating assets is a, is a very big uh, part that I would say most people get a lot of ROI out of that. That's probably the, the biggest heavy hitter. Uh, because they're not having to buy double parts and triple parts and extra spares and that sort of thing. They just know where, where their stuff's at at all times. Security, you know, is, is, a, is a big key. Uh, someone talked earlier about not having to, to do extra passwords and, you know, triple authentication, that sort of thing. And we, we find that um, exactly to be true with single sign-on capabilities. So it's, for the user, it's pretty transparent, but in the back end, We've got um, you know, all sorts of encryption going on and secure messaging. Uh, safety, workflow automation, and infrastructure management. Some of the differentiators, I think what we've seen by comparing this uh, IoT platform to others out there in the, in the market is um, it really is a, a single integration platform, the, the sensor agnostic, uh, capabilities really are what most customers are are gravitating towards because they don't they don't end up getting stuck with a single hardware provider. If they're doing a very small implementation, sometimes that's okay. But if they've got a, a larger enterprise with multiple buildings, multiple locations, they they need to have a flexible architecture that can consume those different feeds. The other, other part of this that's a differentiator is it's the largest um, data fusion services platform for IoT that, that we've seen in the world. Um, so we're doing up to six billion tag reads in a week, and, and, and that's, that's, pretty, um, that's pretty impressive. 
Um, and we've also built in lots of uh, different workflow and alerts. So it becomes where you're not just, um, you know, sitting there waiting for reports or having to drill down. You, you truly become a, an active and it becomes an interactive participation in the supply chain. Because when we set up those intelligent agents or, or business processes, you're able to, to sit back and, and, and get information pushed to you instead of having to always drill down and look for information. So it, it saves a lot, of, a lot of time. So conclusion, uh, you know, there's, there's financial, technical, operational, strategic benefits from all of this. Um, we're able to use legacy components in, in the uh, enterprise today, but but simplify those and and simplify it so that you're you're neutralizing it into a single platform and uh, make the the job a lot more easier for you. Contact information for for me is is right there. I oversee the the sales team here at Tapestry Solutions for the United States. And then uh, if you if you ever have any questions, you get my phone number and my email. I'm happy to entertain any questions at this time. Okay, Tom, uh, thank you very much. Uh, where are some of the biggest ROI areas for the ESI IoT platform? Yeah, so I think, you know, the, the, the biggest ones are going to be the, the reduction in, in the loss of assets because you're, you're able to know exactly where everything is. Um, you, you, we turn these manufacturing plants, these assembly plants, essentially into smart grids, so you're not having to, to look anymore. So I'd say reduced loss of assets is one. Uh, decreased assembly time is another. You're able to produce faster and recognize revenue faster. Um, you're also able to, we found a, you know, a big, big uh, return on investment in uh, reduced cost, I'd call it cost avoidance for materials. So if you think of pharmaceuticals, if you think of, of uh, auto or even um, oil and gas and aerospace, a lot of these companies use epoxy. And so if you think of an IoT platform where you're able to manage and, and have visibility to temperature, humidity, and pressure, uh, you'll get notifications where if, if that stuff starts to go bad, then which is a very very expensive, you know, chemical agent, then you can uh, adjust your controls, your temperatures. Whereas in the past, without having that information real time, people just go out and buy more epoxy. And you know, we one of our customers, in fact, is saving over ten million dollars a year just in that use case alone. Okay, um, just. We're just about out of time. Uh, last question. Um, do you host the solution the same way for different verticals, such as aerospace, defense, pharma, et cetera? Um, or is the solution cloud-based, or do you require on-premises servers? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. We're, we're very flexible, and we find that we host it the same or at least similar within a certain vertical. Uh, but other verticals are different. And what I mean by that is aerospace and defense, we find, tends to want to have on-premise servers. Uh, we find that a lot of life science types of customers prefer, because of green initiatives and, and not wanting to have a you know, bunch of servers in their data centers, they prefer to, to have a cloud solution. So for us, we can go either way. We're currently, um, we chose Amazon. You know, web services is our cloud provider, uh, but we've, we we built it with Docker's in place so that we're we're really cloud agnostic as well. So both cloud and on server, uh, you know, servers on site are, are we we do it both ways. Right. Okay, Tom. Thanks very much. Thank you.